Hello everyone, I'm Marina and it's Sacramel School. In this video, I will show you how to apply a gel polish. Starting with applying a base coat, applying the color close to the cuticle and creating a perfect highlight at the end. This video is made specifically for beginners in the nail industry, since I'll explain each step in detail. Some professional nail techs may also find this information useful, so give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Let's get into it! The quality of a gel coating always depends on how clear the manicure is. It can be any type of manicure, what really matters is that there is no skin left around the cuticles, otherwise it can cause licks, so I'm going to do a manicure and then apply a gel polish. I've done a manicure and a nail repair, now I'm degreasing the nails. I'm cleaning up all the dust as it can cause leakage. If there is too much dust left after the manicure, you can ask your client to wash their hands. Don't worry, it won't affect the wearability of the coating. Now I'm applying an acid-free primer. This product provides a better bonding between the nail and the coating. The primer acts as a double-sided adhesive tape. I'm grabbing a small amount of the product to avoid overlaying, since it can cause lifting. One squeezed out brush is enough for a few nails. Our nails are ready for the base coat. My model's nails naturally have a good architecture. They ascend and descend smoothly. These nails are strong enough without peeling. Since I don't need to strengthen or align the nails, I'm just going to apply a thin layer of a base coat. For this, I'll be using a thick, flexible base. Such a thin coating is perfect for those who are doing their manicures at home. This way, you don't have to remove the thick coating with a nail drill. Since the thinner coating can be easily dissolved with an acetone remover. If you want to strengthen your nails a bit, you can pick up some extra material and smoothly brush through the coating. This additional step will make the nail plate a bit thicker and will strengthen it. So the nail won't break as it grows. If I put the lamp closer, we will see that the highlight, this white circle from the lamp, is uneven. Its edges aren't clear, which means that the nail surface isn't even enough. However, with a fine application, we can't pull off a 100% alignment. After a while, the highlight has become clearer and we can cure the nail. It's a no-alignment technique. Since you are a beginner, it will be much easier for you to work with thick bases. Liquid bases are suitable for professional techs only, in an experienced hand such bases can easily leak. And if the base cut leaks, so does the color, that's why be careful with that. Another life hack is using a camouflage base. It's way easier to see than a transparent one. What's more, when applied unevenly, you'll immediately notice it. If you say a dip, it means that there is not enough material, and vice versa, intense color means extra material. It will guide you while aligning the nail plate. But due to its pigmentation, the camouflage base may not stay for too long on the nail. It can peel off at the ends, so you need to apply a thin layer of liquid base underneath. So there is no extra volume. A really thin layer, with a half-dry brush, so there is no leaking under the cuticle. The next type of gel polish application is the alignment of the nail plate. It is used in order to get rid of bumps and deformations, and to give the nails extra hardness. Squeeze the brush hard enough in the bottle. I'm holding the client's finger with two of mine. Three of my fingers rest under the client's finger and I'm leaning my pinky on them. If you work like this, you will never get an even surface. 
it's going to be all rough and bumpy. Be sure to lean your pinky finger. When applying the base, the client's finger is tilted down, so that there is no leaking. I'm making the first long move in the middle, then I turn a finger to the side, fluffing the brush so it looks like a fan, and with the tip of the brush I paint the sidewall. In no way move the whole brush along the sidewall. Extra material will also cause leakage. Turn it to the other side. I'm painting the sidewall with a fluffed brush. If you want to seal the end, hold the brush perpendicular to the nail and barely touch it. Now we are done with the wet underlay. I'm picking up a drop from the bottle. For the pinky finger I need a small one. And carrying it to the nail. I'm putting it on, lifting my brush and painting along the nail. Then I need to spread this drop, smoothly pulling the brush up and down, barely touching the nail. I roll the finger, keeping the brush on. I lower my round table lamp to check the highlight. It should be smooth, with no refraction. If there are any bumps, turn the client's hand over keeping it at your eye level and check the view from the side. If the oval of the highlight is even, I can put the nail into the lamp. In case with a transparent base, I don't apply the additional transparent underlay. I'm just doing the alignment in one layer. Note that I paint one nail at a time to prevent leaking. On the wet underlay, we put a small drop and spread it out. Watch the thickness of a base cut. If the layer is too thick, the nails will have that muffin look. You can use a thin brush. After applying the base, I take an orange stick and push the cuticle opening up its pocket. That way we can paint under the cuticle. If you notice any base leakage, try to remove it now. If the leakage has dried, then remove it with a nail drill. The next important step is the thickness of the color. If you choose liquid gel polishes, mind, they are very difficult to work with. They are going to leak into the side sinuses and get under the cuticle. What's more? They will take you not two, but three or four layers to be applied. It's all a waste of time, so you'd better not use such gel polishes. If you do have them, you can use them for designing tips. I personally prefer thicker gel polishes, which align themselves. Working with too thick gel polishes is also really difficult. It's hard to even them out and you'll keep seeing the bald spots. The nails are thin at the ends. The whole architecture is kept in the middle of the nail plate. That's what the alignment was for. After applying the base cut, I push the cuticle with a stick to provide a deeper coverage under the cuticle. Squeezing the brush hard in the bottle, leaning with my pinky, Putting the finger down a little, pushing the material towards the cuticle and going down. That's my first move. Then I put the finger to the side and paint the side wall with the tip of the brush, making gentle strokes. The color isn't solid yet, it's semi-transparent, a really thin application. Turn the finger to the other side. Gently sealing the ends with my brush perpendicularly, if you like sealed ends. We can see that the color is pretty uneven. So now I'm holding my brush flat and making long moves from the cuticle to the free edge. And look, all the ball spots are gone. Now I need to paint under the cuticle. 
I'll be using a thin brush for that. It's one of the easiest ways for beginners. I'm pulling the cuticle back with my fingers. Again, the finger is tilted down to prevent licks. I'm painting under the cuticle with a thin brush. In this position, with the cuticle pulled, I place the client's hand in the lamp. And halfway through, I release my hand. I'm doing this so the cuticle doesn't close or get stuck to the color. This time, I'm grabbing a bigger drop from the bottle. I tilt the finger down again, lean my pinky and pull the cuticle. And pushing the drop to the cuticle, now the gel polish will even out on a deeply colored layer. Make long aligning strokes. There shouldn't be any short tapping moves, only the long ones. Without touching the nail, slip quickly over the surface. If you've touched the skin, use an orange stick to clean up. Before curing in the lamp. Now I'll show you a second way to apply the color under the cuticle. It's called the fan method and it is suitable for beginners. First, I paint the nail plate the same way, pulling the cuticle back a lot. And now, by fluffing my brush, I'm starting to paint under the cuticle. Making small strokes. The more you flatten the brush, the thinner it will get and will go deeper under the cuticle. Aligning the surface. On client's nails, I'm using a conveyor method. I mean, I paint one nail on the one hand and then I paint the nail on the other one. This will reduce my working time. There is no need to make this circular move under the cuticle on the second layer. If the first layer didn't have any leaks, then on the second layer there's likely to be none either. You can apply a second layer of color coating onto several nails at once. Top coats also vary in thickness. A very thick top easily covers any design – glitter, sliders, stamping. It's not so easy to spread on a regular coating. A top coat, medium in consistency, will suit for beginners. Liquid consistency of the top gives a beautiful shine and a quick and smooth highlight. I'm applying the top coat as I did the second color coat, tilt the finger down. I'm applying the top coat as I did the second color coat, tilting the finger down, aligning the top coat with long strokes from the cuticle to the free edge. Remember there was a small dip on the index nail? We can add a little more top into it. Turn the finger over so that the top could align. That means that if the base coat is uneven, you can always fix it at the top coating stage. But make sure there is not too much of it. Because it can bubble, give a purple, blue or yellow tint. Here's the finished result. Write in the comments which one of the under cuticle application methods you like better. Wishing you all success in your work, bye bye. I had to add something else I guess. <laughs>